Wow, uh, it has definitely been a crazy 24 hours uh, in the NFL. Um, for one, Tom Brady, he officially retired on his own terms, not on Adam Schefter's terms. Um, and then Brian Flores, just this whole thing with him apparently suing the NFL uh, for a lot of funny business that happened both behind and in front of the scenes. And we're going to talk about a little bit of both. Uh, first off, with Tom Brady retiring, we know Tom Brady, he's, they probably going to waive that whole little five year where you got to wait five years to get into the Hall of Fame. They probably going to let him do it next year. Um, but he's certainly there, obviously the most accomplished quarterback in NFL history, and it's nowhere near close for anybody else. Uh, he's obviously done everything there is to do in the NFL, and he's done it like three, four, five, six, seven times. Uh, so obvious Hall of Famer uh, in five years when Ben Roethlisberger retires, uh, and whoever else retires too, that's Hall of Fame worthy, so to speak. Uh, it's going to get overshadowed by a long shot by Tom Brady. Um, but anyway, something that Tom Brady did yesterday, uh, along with his retirement, was give a shout out. And I, I looked through his whole story. And boy, that, that was a lot of story to look through. I was getting annoyed just having to go page by page because I just wanted to confirm this. But Lamar Jackson was literally the only person that he said anything even remotely close to this to. And he tagged Lamar Jackson and said, you're next. Now, he spelled you're the wrong way, uh, but it's okay, Brady, we'll give you a pass. Now, I think he actually deleted it because I looked today and I couldn't find it. And it wasn't past the whole 24-hour rule where your story stays up on Instagram. But anyway, um, he said for Lamar, he said, you're next. You're next. And he didn't say that to any other quarterbacks in the NFL. None. Um, and I thought that was special. And... This is not even just about this whole little Instagram story. Um, something that I wanted to touch on with that is, is just something that keeps coming to mind over and over again. You continue to hear these analysts and a lot of people in the media. Uh, they tell you so much of what Lamar Jackson can't do. They remind you so much of Lamar Jackson, his, the, the limitations they say he has, uh, the, that he won't be sustainable. Uh, the, should he even be paid? Should the Ravens move on? They, they, they come up with a lot of different stuff about one Lamar Jackson. And then a lot of fans, they, they watch these TV shows. They watch the ESPNs, the NFL Network. They watch all this stuff and they consume it. And since that's what they're consuming, that's what they feed out to themselves, to each other. And they're like, oh, well, well th that's true. Th those guys are right. Lamar Jackson can't do this. He can't do that. They, because they highlight his struggles. And again, not saying Lamar Jackson is a perfect quarterback. He certainly has his struggles. But these shows and these analysts and these experts, they always highlight and continue to talk about Lamar Jackson's struggles. But they, they do that a lot of times and leave his success to the side. They're like, oh, yeah, we won't. We ain't gonna worry about that. Let's talk about the bad stuff. But they, since they highlight that, a lot of fans, they think that Lamar Jackson is incapable. But when you actually listen to players, the guys that put on the jerseys and the shoulder pads and the helmets, they all continue to give Lamar Jackson credit. Tom Brady gave Lamar Jackson credit. Aaron Rodgers gave Lamar Jackson credit. Patrick Mahomes gave Lamar Jackson credit. Jadavian Clowney, like we could go down a long list of players that have continued to give Lamar Jackson credit because they know. The players know, the players realize, the players understand because the players play. Game recognized game, man. And that's never gonna change. So as much as the people with all the suits on and, and, and the TV time and all that, they continue to say what they say, the players, they always end up saying the exact opposite. But just thought that was interesting. Now, oh boy, with Brian Flores, whew, this has been, whew, it's been crazy. <laughs> it's been crazy. He started, started off February with a bang. He said, oh boy, NFL is, is a dirty, dirty business. Um, and, and he's suing the NFL for them, uh, discriminated against him, um, and he's suing the NFL as a whole. Uh, and, it, of course, the one that got highlighted, well, the two teams that got highlighted were both the Dolphins and the Giants. Um, he is suing with the Dolphins specifically. Uh, it was about the integrity of the game. Uh, he said that the, the owner, Stephen Ross, 
tried to pay him an extra, what was it, 100000 I think it was 100000 or 900000 I think it was an extra 100000 per game that he lost because he wanted to tank. He wanted to tank. He said, Flores, hey, and this is all alleged. So, but anyway, it, allegedly, he said, Flores, hey, if you lose, you get some extra cash in your wallet. And it's like, man, that's crazy because people already know. It's, it's, it's a lot of funny business that goes on in the NFL. And now with, um, it, it's like this is that funny business in reverse because now they've uh, combined and, and they pushing this whole betting thing heavy. They're like, oh, bet this, bet this, sports gambling, that, that, and that ain't, that ain't with all that. Um, but they pushing it heavy. Uh, but now this is somebody on the flip side, somebody from within the Dolphins organization that that is trying to sway the coach to lose on purpose. So it's it's just crazy, man. But it's really not that surprising when you think about it. It's really not. Um, he also uh, is suing the Giants for pretty much wasting his time. That, that's what he's suing the Giants for. To, to put it in layman's terms, to be straightforward, to be blunt about it, he's suing the Giants for wasting his time. Uh, because apparently they already knew it was Brian Dayball. It was him all, already. But they just interviewed Brian Flores just to go through the, 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 the motions. But uh, the text exchange with him and Bill Belichick, initially when they, uh, they first showed the little clip, the little piece of the text yesterday, I was thinking, because well, it said that Bill Belichick was like, oh, man, I'm sorry, I messed up. And he's like, I, 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 thought, uh, I thought this was Brian Dayball. And I was like, what? what? But then they showed, I saw the whole exchange with the text message today. And I was like, oh, okay. Because they showed the whole back and forth. And then I was like, ah, oh, Brian Flores, Brian Dayball, uh, Bill Belichick. Because Bill Belichick apparently was texting Brian Flores, hey, congrats. Congrats on the Giants job. You got it. Great stuff. But apparently Brian Flores was like, uh, what are you talking about? I, I interview on Thursday. I, I haven't even gone yet. But if you're hearing something that I'm hearing that I didn't hear, I mean, hey, I, I hope that's true. And then Br Bill Belichick was like, apparently, again, with those text messages, apparently he was like, oh, uh, sorry, I, I messed up. I thought this was Brian Dable. So he got his Brian's mixed up, allegedly. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. But. This just takes me back, um, not even far, just all the time. I, I see a lot of people bring it up in the comments section, even with T. Martin, uh, when he interviewed for the uh, Bills, the, their offensive coordinator position that was ultimately given to Ken Dorsey, who's already on the Bills staff. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, that ain't nothing but Rooney Rule. That's it. That, we ain't got to worry about it. It ain't nothing but Rooney Rule. And I thought about it. I was like, oh, well, it, it actually could have been. Maybe they had some significant interest. Maybe they didn't. But with the Rooney Rule, I, 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 never, I never agreed with the Rooney Rule. Not because I don't want to see... I don't want uh, um, to see uh, minorities not get hired, but I feel like it's just, it's just a waste of time. Because it, it, takes, it makes teams just go through the, go through the motions. Because if, they, if a team has somebody that they have in mind... Who they're going to hire, they're going to hire that person. And with the Rooney Rule, it's like you, you have to interview a minority. You have to. But it's like even, even if you don't plan on hiring them, even if you got somebody in mind that you're going to hire already, you have to interview a minority. And I just feel like it, it wastes everybody's time. Because you, I feel like teams would just do it just to be like, All right, okay, checked it off. All right, we, we're done. Finish. Finito. That's it. We, we checked off our minority box, and we, we, it's over. All right, cool. Let's get it. Let's go hire whoever we really want to hire now. Whether that other person who they want to hire now is a minority or not. It just, it's like they just go through the motions, and I feel like it's just a waste of a, a rule uh, of the NFL. And then um, the other rule that I feel like it just, it just made stuff that much more. and Because I feel like NFL, like they, they brought this on themselves. I feel like with the Rooney Rule, it was just a matter of time. It was a matter of time. And this thing has been put in place for a very long time. But I feel like this is just a matter of time before something like Brian Flores is doing was going to happen. Because when you have a rule like that in place, it basically is the okay for them to do what they did. That's it. Because, all right, we, we interviewed a minority. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. Who, who we really want to bring in there? That's, that's what the rule is to do, is for them to do exactly that. 
But then um, the one that they came out with, I want to say last year or no, the year before last with um, if somebody on your coaching staff gets promoted to if a minority on your coaching staff, excuse me, gets promoted to be a head coach, then you get a two third round picks like you get one third round pick the following year and then one third round pick the year after. It's like you you really got to uh incentivize. That's so that 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 was always really weird to me. It was so weird. Like y'all y'all are really pushing this thing like that to where again it's like so teams are going to a lot of teams are going to just go through stuff and really promote some stuff just so they can get them picks. <laughs> they are really going to they're going to push people and they're going to try to they, they're going to try to push minorities and whatnot to be like, "Hey, all right, hey, this for you. Hey, right, I'm trying to do this for you. I'm trying to get your head coaching job. And and it can work out, but at the same time, it's like teams teams want them draft picks because these are literally free draft picks, free draft picks. And if I was like, hey, here, this person becomes a head coach, this minority becomes a head coach, there you go, there goes your draft picks. And, and you know what? Here's a kicker: not only this year, but you get another one next year too. So it's it's just it's just weird, man. It's just weird. So like I said, I feel like NFL they they brought a lot of this on themselves a lot of this was is is their own doing so what comes out of it i don't know um but you got to feel like brian flores is he's probably done coaching uh in the nfl that 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 is probably a wrap uh for brian flores and i'm sure he knows that he he, he knows how how these things go um so we'll see we'll see and what but what will happen to the dolphins though what will happen to their owner What's going to go down with that? What's going to happen with the Giants? I mean, I feel like it probably, it's probably, it probably won't be anything. Probably just like a fine or something. Probably like a fine, maybe like $300,000, something like that. I don't know. Maybe they take away a third-round pick, a fourth-round. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do. They're going to come up with something. But uh, we will be watching and, and just seeing what goes down. So anyway, team, keep it clean. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. We out.